Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Glenn. If this is the first time you have viewed any of my content on my channel, welcome and please subscribe. Um, we are going to be doing a recap on what I've done so far and why I've done it. I've had a question from one of my subscribers asking um, why I've done what I've done. Um, and his mates have asked about Compound Turbo-ing. <laughs> um, why does the big one feed into the small one, and vice versa with the exhaust, and the benefits of it. So I'm going to go through that. Um, if you know all of this already, I'm going to have a video at the end. I'll put a time link down the bottom. It's going to be the check valve installation. So click below on the time link. And I'll take you straight to there. If not, stay tuned and I'll take you back to where it started. Alright, this is when I first got the car. I started the grill mod. Here it is painted black with mesh, STI and F badge. Alright, I've got a colour coded bigger scoop on it now. I'm going to look at doing suspension soon. First, I'm going to do a brake upgrade. And suspension links. Here I've got a pillar pod gauge that I fabricated up myself with fiberglass. I've molded it to the A pillar so it's actually got the texture as well. So now we're going to see the suspension upgrade. I've got WRX wagon struts in it and super low springs. You can see the difference there. And then we got some flares, color coded flares I got from Ozfoz. Uh, in the background, you will see my mate's R32 GTR. That's probably the fastest car I've driven so far. And one of the reasons why I'm going for 400 horsepower. Um, currently, that GTR has 350 kilowatts, and I'd like to give it a run for its money. So my car got hit in the rear bumper in car park at work, which that crack is. So I went and bought an STI rear bumper and that was damaged. So I started to mould it to the GT rear bumper. Here you can see me moulding the cutout for the exhaust and transferring it to the opposite side. So this is where the dual exhaust comes into play. As you can see I'm moulding there and I've painted it in a primer black. So here I've welded up the rear section. Um, it's from diff back. Split it off into two. You can see me under the car. I'm going dual pipes on both sides. There it is with just the pipes. Not very even. Now the back view. One's a little shorter. So I added tips, looks heaps better now. And then this happened. I blew up my front diff that's in the city at Fitzroy Gardens. Well, I had to get it towed home. And it was at this point that I needed to replace the whole gearbox. So this is where it began. Bought myself a R32 Golf to get around in. Uh, it's a pretty good daily. Um, I've got some other videos on that if you want to click on the links above. So out comes the engine to get to the gearbox. There's the gearbox and gearbox is out. Here's the engine back in with the second hand gearbox. Um, here is the triple nine racing manifold that I got. Um, I got it because of where the flange is because I knew I wanted to go compound turbo from a while ago so I purchased that so it enabled me to put the turbo in front of the right hand front wheel right next to the front mounting cooler. You can see here a little cutout just below the, the rail there that's where the exhaust will go to the low mount turbo. 
So the engine went back in, uh, still with the front mount, uh, TDO4, it started to make a funny noise, a bit of a screamy noise. I didn't know what it was, so the engine came out again, and it was the tensioner. The bearings had gone on it, and it was the ball bearings in the cam cover. So I was very lucky there. So now it came out again, and this is where it started. So the oil drain for the low mount turbo, where the oil filter is, that's the cooler that has been removed, and where the bread line is, that's just to bypass it so I can use a relocation kit. So here is my oil cooler and relocation kit. Had to make up the bread line, that's where the oil cooler will be and the relocation for the filter. I have the low mount turbo oil feed also coming off that sandwich block right there. So now that the oil is done, uh, I can start on the exhaust part of it. So we're going to make an exhaust to just in front of the right front wheel. This is my first attempt here. So we've got two and a half into two inch. Pretty crappy welds, but <laughs> it is a stick welder. And pretty much the first time I've welded other than the exhaust that I did, the dual exhaust at the back. Here you can see the intercooler part and what it looks like behind the front bar. So now we're going to move on to the dump pipe from the low mount. So this will also be the up pipe to the larger turbo that's sitting in the stock location. So here we have a picture of it right now. It will connect to the stock up pipe. Here we have an engine bay picture. We have the TDO4 up the top and the stock TF035 down the bottom in the low mount location. If you want to see a video of it running, click the card above. Alright, we're going to talk about compound turboing. So it's just like compound interest. Um, when you add something to the first one, it adds on top, adds on top, adds on top. And that's how you build up so quick. So we have here the stock TF035. So this was just a trial to see if it would work and it has. So you can see here uh, the exhaust going in you see intake with the 90 degree silicon pipe that is coming from the compressor side of the TD04 which is on above. So it's feeding compressed air into a turbo that would normally see atmospheric. So it thinks it's atmospheric but it's actually already boosted so it boosts it more and that's how we get you boost up so high with compound turbos and that's why a lot of diesels use compound turboing as well now I'm using it because I want to be punchy on the road nice and quick with the turbo being close to the manifold as well it will be and now I don't have that TF-035 there. I have the TDO-4L which flows a bit better so hopefully that will help and I've got the GT-35 on top feeding it which moves a lot of air so we'll see how that goes. Here we have a mini oil sump that I made for the low mount turbo. So the oil drains from the low mount and then gets sucked out of the mini sump with the scavenger pump. Um, it's so the oil can drain out of the turbo and doesn't get blown past the seals. Towards the end of the video I will have a check valve install so this will make sure that oil does not come back from the large engine sump back into the low mount mini sump and back up into the turbo.
So this part of the exhaust failed, um, it leaked too much, which means I wasn't making boost. So I decided to make a new section with a V-band and lobster cuts. And here it is, taped together, ready for welding. A bit of a jigsaw, all the different angles you can get. So here's a before and after. It heats better. And it holds boost, which is awesome. Um, now onto the GT35 piping. So here's the adapter for the GT35. It's going to be rotated. I've notched it out. That is the wastegate adapter. And here we've cut the hole. <laughs> it looks pretty funny. So here I'm just trying to get the angle right for the wastegate so it doesn't foul on the intake silicon pipe into the throttle body. Now, I wasn't really thinking that much when I was doing this, um, but I could just turn the wastegate around. So here it is up against the silicon pipe. So guys, test fit with the wastegate. It's not touching. Um, that's just tacked on, so go and weld it all. Uh, I'll weld it up, just need to weld the V-band onto the wastegate pipe there. I'm done for that adapter. Right, so we're going to talk about the exhaust side now. So we go from manifold through the low mount turbo, out the low mount turbo, up to top mount turbo, and then just a normal dump. So, what we do is wastegate in the bottom turbo, so at the moment it's internal, and that will bypass the low mount to allow more gas to the larger turbo. The larger turbo has that 50mm wastegate on it, which dumps into the 3 inch dump. And that is about it where we are at the moment. Thanks, and keep watching for the check valve video, starting now. Alright, we're going to do the check valve installation. So it's going to go into this hose here, goes around to the scavenger pump. The scavenger pump is over here, so what I'm going to do is I'll hook up the battery and just put the scavenger pump on to get as much uh, oil through as possible so I don't lose it you can hear it it's big enough Hopefully that's pumped it out of the uh, mini oil something. Alright. Alright, so I'm just going to unscrew this hose clamp. Let's see how we go. Hopefully with uh, gravity it doesn't come back up. Alright, so I've just pulled it off, no oil, oh, a little drop, so I'm going to put the check valve between here and here, so the oil cannot come back from the sump to the scavenger when it's not on and back into the mini oil sump as it's lower than the main sump of the engine. Okay, so I'm going to cut it round about here. Um, mainly because there's already a bend to go to the scavenger and this part is straight and easy to access at the moment so i cut it there and put the check valve in there and then we have the hose cut and here is the other section let's put the check valve in 
and there we have it the check valve is installed with the arrow going towards the sump make sure you got that in the right way or it won't flow so the scavenger pump will be pushing it through I was going to put one from the mini sump up but I thought the scavenger pump will be sucking so I'm not sure if it can open up the valve that way as good as pushing it open instead of pulling it open so I'll just stick with one it's okay if there's a little bit of oil in there I'll just leave the uh, scavenger pump leaving running for a couple of seconds after the engine turns off and then we have it installed and the hose clamps on and um, this view there we have it done stay tuned for more